Morning, it's the Saints man, small van driver on the CX, it's Sunday morning, the 5th March, believe it or not, and 9, 9.30, thought I'd get this blog done, um, yeah, last week, really good week, money wise, way too many dead miles, it was a lot of long distance last week, it wasn't planned, it's just how it, it this is the courier driver, isn't it, you don't quite know where you're going to end up, you can Say you're going to stay local, then if something comes up, when you think, yeah, I can do that. Um, fuel prices for last week. Uh, UK fuels, my BP one, was 122.45, which works out at 146.94. That was my cheapest one. My Also, my UK fast fuel, which is Texaco, was 124.18, which works out at 149, which is still pretty good. Well, then next week, they've both gone up. Um, we'll come on to that next week but did a full week which I planned to do which is a great result and had my most profitable week of the year it's improving but we'll start with Monday I had a job booked in and it was Daventry to Beckley now Beckley is how well can we put it it's on the Kent Sussex border around there near Rye near a place called Rye and that was booked in it was a large box it was an amplifier uh, and it was going to a, uh, a recording studio sort of thing um, in a remote place. Obviously, you could make as much noise as you liked. You had no neighbours. Really good. Uh, took the job on Friday and didn't realise it was going to be in the, absolutely in the middle of nowhere, right near uh, seven miles from Hastings. And got pretty well paid for it. But I had that horrible feeling I'm going to be in the middle of nowhere. There wasn't a driver nearby, as in not really nearby. There was one long wheelbase van within 10 miles and a couple of sh uh, small vans a little bit further afield, but they were further afield. And then a job popped up, unbelievably, from um, a power station, Dungeness Power Station, which is just past Camber Sands, Romney Marshes, which I've never been before. Um, nothing there. I mean, it's on the coast, but... No, not a lot there. Um, and a job popped up from Kent. It just said Kent. And it was going to Morecambe, Haysham uh, Power Station, which was an extraordinary amount of distance. Uh, I could have quoted really high, I think, and probably got this, but I still quoted high for the distance I did. And they could say phoned, and I got it. And it was a small box. It fitted in the size of my hand. It was a valve, one little valve in a box. So that was going to be a long drive uh so i'd already decided that'll be it i'll, I'll be night out in in haitian morecambe which is not a good area but fair enough went straight to the job got the job on went and got some fuel fueled up got something to eat and set off and i had one break on the way up it was I don't know how long it took me but i got it delivered by before seven at night but on the way up, I'd pulled over, put my laptop on and put a 30 mile radius and a job was popped up for the next day from Preston going across to Durham. So I put a good bid on it, good strong bid and I got a phone call uh, before I even got the Haysham job off at the power station and got the job for the next day. Preston's half an hour down the road. I hadn't booked any for the accommodation by this point. But then when I'd done the Haitian job and finished it and got it done, I sat in the car park, went on Airbnb, and I managed to get a uh, Airbnb uh, bedroom. It said in a shared house, in a flat. In fact, it was the flat. Uh, the gentleman whose flat it was, he was in tourism, he was at his mum's, and there was a lockbox. And I got an Airbnb in Preston for 35 quid, which is great value. And parking right outside, very modern flat. So that was Monday done. Fantastic day. You know, you, you got the week off to a brilliant start. And I'm in North England. I've got a job to Durham. I've uh, got a pick up at seven in the morning to get across to Durham. It was going to a hospital in Durham. So we were out the door Tuesday morning, uh, showered, shaved and out the door. Up at six, uh, just north of Preston I was. 
and it was about 15 20 minute journey got to the house it was picking up residential and picked that up took that over to durham which was a nice drive across the whatever the hills are getting across the country i don't know what they are but um yeah so i got to durham and i thought well i was in durham by about up to nine ten a quarter to ten and fueled up because i needed some fuel after i'd done the job and no i didn't fill up i was at the hospital and it was a private hospital it wasn't the big one in durham it was a private one and dropped that off I had a little job finding it it was a different building but no issues and then looking for jobs and i was still pretty much thinking well i'll look for anywhere and durham can be a bit tricky durham itself and newcastle gateshead and sunderland's around there washington yeah there's quite a few drivers around normally anyway job popped up to kent again which i thought well me another long drive uh quoted on it didn't get it and then two jobs popped up uh one from a shipper i knew i'd worked for before one from a shipper i didn't know and got brilliant feedback and they're both going to aberdeen did i want to go to aberdeen did i want to quote on it i thought if i'm going to go to aberdeen i'm going to quote really high i'm going to and if they don't do it i'm not fussed and i quoted on the one that i knew with the shipper and it was pick up at straight away soon as this is like 10 o'clock um and it was pick up before 11 and i was going to get there at just after up as 10 25 to 11 and it needed to be delivered in aberdeen for four which was tight anyway um and she phone phone went and it was a lady i knew because i've done work before for them and she says where are you i told her oh, you're not far away so i can be there at 25 to 11 and she says i'll send you the uh postcode can you make your way there and it was good money pound a mile and it was a lot of mileage um and it was picking up a pallet one pallet so i got across to the company i still needed fuel i pulled into the company it was 10 35 exactly went to see the man he says it's going to be half an hour he said we're not finished it i went okay so i found the ship up she says oh that's an issue i said well i can wait it's not a problem i can wait and she says yeah i said okay so i went back in and see the, uh, the guy I said i'm going to get some fuel because the sainsbury's was literally 300 yards down the road uh and i'll get a fuel card that goes there the uk fuels and so i nipped down got the fuel used the toilet when i got some uh, food because i knew it was gonna be a long journey and back to the uh factory and in fact i didn't leave until quarter past 11 and it got to be there for four and it was 259 miles so there was pretty much no way that was going to get there for four even if i didn't stop which i was always going to stop and have a quick stretch of the legs 10 minutes just 10 minutes and i phoned and the, the director of the company come out and says you're going to struggle to get there and i've got it on the sat nav i said look on my sat nav it says even if i don't have a break it's going to be quarter to 20 past four he said, so a 10 minute break. I said, it could be anything from half as four to quarter to five. I said, on the other sat nav, it's even longer. It says five o'clock. So, you know, it is going to not get there for four. Is that going to be an issue? He said, no, because I'm going to phone them. They wanted this job as an emergency. We've done it as quick as we can. And I'll tell them they shut at four, but I'm going to tell them to keep someone there, a forklift driver there, and wait for you if they want it. So off he'd, try, he'd come back and he says, yep. He says, can you let me know when you're two hours away? He said, then I can phone him and give him exact time. I said, yep. Then I'll phone the shipper, which is what you should do. Keep them in the loop. Phone her. And she says, so why is it going to be late? I said, because I'm, I'm not leaving till 20. I left at 20 past 11. <clears throat> she said, but it's only this on the map. I said, yeah, but it don't work. Like that. I said, I've got two sat navs. I've showed the boss of the company. I said, I'll do my best to get there as quick as I can. I said, but it is 260 miles. So off we set and had a lovely drive up at the A68, right up to south of Edinburgh, around Edinburgh. And I couldn't get on the M90. There was, the bridge was closed at the M90 further up. And they put me on the A92, I think it was. Didn't make no difference really to the time. But I stopped once for 10 minutes, literally 10 minutes. Uh, there was a public toilet on the side and I had stretched the legs back in the van and clicked on a uh, hotel and um, my good friend neil at neptune said he'd stopped in aberdeen at this hotel 
and I booked it and I booked the hotel. It was 39 quid for the night. Uh, hotel, lovely. So that was booked. And off we went. And yeah, I phoned him two hours away. The boss, it went to my answer machine, left a message. Then I got a phone call from uh, someone from the company. It wasn't him. It says, how are you doing? I said, I'm going to be there between quarter to five and five o'clock. And I said, it may even be just after five, depending on how the traffic goes in Aberdeen, where, you know, where it is. He said, OK, I'll ring you back. And I'm thinking, ring me back. So I phoned the shipper. She couldn't believe it. She said, well, you're not going to get there for four. I went, no. So I'm never going to get there for four. I says, it's such a, she says, well, which way are you going? I said, the way, the only way you can go. I says, and I ain't, I've only stopped for 10 minutes. I said, I haven't had a proper half hour break. So she went, oh, okay, well, you, you'll have to let me know. I said, yeah. I said, I'm staying in Aberdeen now. I said, I'm not coming out of Aberdeen. I says, and if it, they can't get it off, it will start in the van and I'll have to deliver it in the morning and there'll be a charge, which she wasn't enamoured with, but that's tough. That's the way it is. I can't, I ain't bloody Sterling Moss. Anyway, the phone went about half hour later and it was from the general. He says, yep, can you take it to a different address? I went, okay. He says, literally, they've got three buildings on the same industrial estate. So take it to this address. Same road, just down the road. He says, you're going to meet, there's a guy called Sean. He's going to wait, be there. He'll take it off for forklift. And it was all hunky dory. And I got there at 10 to 5. And he wasn't expecting me there to get there at quarter past 5. So he was happy. He said, brilliant. And off it come. Then I phoned a shipper. She was nice as pie. So I don't know what the fuss was about, but it was done. I was done by five. I went to Tesco. Got some sandwiches for the morning, for breakfast stuff. Because uh, I've run out of food. I went to the hotel. And from the outside, I thought, oh my God. It looked a tip. It was like, I think it was an old Best Western Hotel. But outside can be deceptive. Car park was okay. It was across the road. But I thought, whoa, this is... And I goes through a revolving door and went inside and it was lovely. It was clean. Big hotel. Got a bar. Got a restaurant. And so we booked in and got a room and had a meal there. I had a pint of San Miguel. I had two course meal for £14.50 deal. They do a deal for workers. And the meal were lovely. Um, so that was that. That was Tuesday. And... I got a job as well while I sat there. I got my laptop waiting for my food and a job popped up from Aberdeen down to Glenrothes for the next morning, which get out of Aberdeen can be a real nightmare. And it was pick up at eight o'clock and I booked on it. I did go competitively. I went 70 pence uh, every mile. I was only a mile and a half from it. And I went 70 pence just to get further south and got a phone call and got it. So I was set up for the next day. So Monday and Tuesday was fantastic. Two brilliant days. Wednesday. This is where it started to unravel and go a bit tits up. Um, did the job. Aberdeen. Picked it up. Uh, had a bit of a wait. I ended up leaving there about 20 past 8. But I wasn't fussed. Lovely drive down to Glenrothes. Glenrothes, whatever it is. And yeah, I had a good night's sleep as well. I had a really good night's sleep in the hotel. So I was fresh, got to Glenrothes, got it unloaded. It was about up as 10. I made the decision. Glenrothes is the other side of the, uh, the fourth bridge, the Queen's Ferry Bridge, sort of the set is south of Dundee. You come through Dundee, then Glenrothes is between there and, and Edinburgh. Uh, it's about 25 miles from Edinburgh, I think it was. I decided that I was going to perch between Edinburgh and Glasgow and just get a job south. Let's get back down to England. And I knew the feed had been really sporadic all the time. There'd been not a lot of jobs. And so it proved. I sat there. I got to uh, the services. Well, just outside the services, there's a lovely area on that motorway just off it, just before the services where there's a there's all sorts. Greg's, McDonald's, blah, blah, blah. And you can park on one of the lanes uh, so you can sit there all day long if you want. And I bloody well nearly did. I, sh I, I, sort of thought I'd sit here. And I sat there and sat there. And the thing is, I got a job booked in the next day from my house, Northampton. So I've got to get home. And I quoted on a couple of jobs, really cheap, and didn't even get a sniff. One was going to um, Manchester. I quoted cheap and nothing. And another job, I decided that I'd take anything south and I'd have to, the Thursday job, I'd have to give them it back. You know, say, look, I'm really sorry. I'm stuck. 
Uh, I expected to be home and I didn't want to do that. But I quoted on a job that was delivery next morning and I quoted 60 pence a mile, which is against my principle. But to get out of there, I thought I'm going to have to try and quote somewhere. And I could phone and I phoned and he said, and I quote, I've just sold it. I said, oh, shit. I said, can I ask you how much you sold it for? I says, would it be cheeky? I said, because I am trying to get, you know, to England. He sold it for 40 pence. 40 pence a mile. And that included you had to deliver it the next morning at 6.30 in the morning. So you've got to drive down and deliver it at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, and he sold it for 40 pence. Wow. And I quoted on another job, which was down to south of Bath. It was a real journey. And again, delivery the next morning. I decided to quote on it. I thought, yeah, quoting it's going to be a long drive, but we'll see. I still quoted 60p because I thought that was the lowest I wanted to go. And again, I phoned up and that one went for 40 pence. And the, the tin app was there was a backload there down 440 miles and they wanted 100 pound. Pays 100 pound backload. And the worst thing about that was someone bought it for 100 pound for 440 miles. It was down in Kent, Medway. Are you having a laugh? So I just decided to sod this. I'm going to start driving south. And the more I think about it now, what I probably should have done was I burnt the miles down to north of Manchester, Preston, straight away. Just drove straight to Preston and I would have got a job, something to get me home or get me near home. Lesson learned. I drove 340 miles dead back to Northampton. I got home, weren't too late actually, I got home about quarter to eight. But when you're driving that amount of miles dead, you can think, and it's dep depressing is the word, that people are doing jobs for that just to get a bit of pe I mean, come on. Anyway, that was Wednesday. So Wednesday was a complete washout. Forget it. Monday and Tuesday, good job they were brilliant days, but it brought it back into line. I was still way above target, don't worry for the week, but wowzers. So, I got the job, what I've got, Thursday. It was picking up Milton Keynes and it was going to Perry Vale. I like working with this company. They're a local company. They're really fair. Uh, they're good at They pay on time. Everything's right about it. They're a Northampton company and I don't, I like working for them. And the pickup was 17 miles from my house and it was 24 small boxes down to Perry Vale, which is West London. And job went perfect. No problem. Into Perry Vale, dropped the load off, then looking for a job. And getting out of London, it can be a pain. And I took a job I probably shouldn't have took because it was close. It was Wembley. I'd parked in a Sainsbury's in Wembley. And it was right near the stadium, right near Wembley Stadium, one street away. You know, it was massive. Oh, yeah. uh, and it was going to Cranley, which is Surrey, uh, south of Guildford. And it's a village. And it was a letter. It, well, it was an A4 envelope. And that was it. And that paid really well. You know, the job going down paid well. That paid really well. Paid well over a pound a mile, well over a pound a mile to get me there. But I had to come back and I got back to Guildford thinking, hopefully I'll get something out of Guildford. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to start trundling home and see. Because I've got a job on the Friday from Milton Keynes, the same collection point I've done to, as Thursday, going to Burnley. So I've got a long day Friday. Uh, sort of, you know, could it be a long day Friday. So I decided, like, I'd start trundling back and see if I can get something on the way home. Didn't happen again. So Wednesday and Thursday were as bad as Monday and Tuesday were as good, if you see what I mean. So it happens. It's just it's the way it is. But I am not quoting pants money. And out of London, a lot of the guys will tell the YouTubers, you know, you're quoting 40, 50 pence to get out of London. You know, 40, you know, it's just, it's, it's painful. So that didn't happen. Uh, drove home uh, and then I got a job say pick it up at 7.30 Friday morning which we did got to the company it was 11 boxes going up to Burnley it was just north of Burnley so it's a good drive got good money on it again goodish you know suited what I wanted and I decided I just wanted to get one job back I wanted to go up do one big long job and do a big long back if I could and Manchester Friday, it was popping, small van jobs. I was 26 mile north of Manchester, central Manchester. 
So I, I decided when I got to Burnley, I tipped and I thought, right, let's move south and then we'll have a look. But I didn't even get a chance to because there was a job out of Berry or Burry, as they call it, Burry, Berry. And I was within range and time and it was going to Market Harbour, which is 30 miles from my house. That's a lie. It's 26 miles from my house because I got the job. Uh, and it was just picking up two parts from a company delivering to a huge supermarket for an engineer to do some with a lift. And I got it. And I quoted it, all right, all right, money. It wasn't brilliant. It was, I, I feel I quoted, I think it was about 75, 74 pence and got it. And grateful to get it because I literally went to Burnley, did the job, picked this job up, went to the job, picked it up, fueled up, and drove and back so it was a really nice day it was a nine hour day i did stop and have a quick stretch of legs for about 10 minutes on the services user facilities and carried on driving got it delivered i delivered it by three-ish done job done and going home and i was home quarter to four so really good day in fact i was home just before i was home about up as three so really good day, just under nine hours and really good money. You know, that's the perfect day for me on a, getting home. So jobs are good. Em. That was the week. Um, yeah, too many dead miles. But Scotland overall still paid well. Uh, I mean, I went from Kent on the Monday all the way up to Aberdeen uh, Tuesday night. I, I did the length of the country and... Yeah, it's a long way. I did a lot of miles last week. I did 2,000, just over 2,000 miles last week, which is the most I've done for a long while. But it's all sitting on a motorway. And I don't, I do 63, 64 tops, cruise control, just keep it consistent. Easy driving. Boring a bit. Scotland wasn't. Scotland's gorgeous going through there. Even the motorways are nice. Uh, my total hours is 54, which is a lot for me. I try and keep it under 50, but I say Every every hour worked was that, and I did forty hours driving, which is a lot driving eight hours a day every day. I mean, yeah, the couple of days was longer than that nine ten, nine ten and a half nine. I had a short day on Thursday, didn't do many, but a lot of driving. And my money before VAT was eleven hundred and seventy. Then I had the VAT on because I'm VAT registered. Took it up to fourteen hundred and four pounds. And then I give 9% of that, soon to be 10% in April when I'm, I've done my first year. But 9% of that goes to the government, the HMRC, 126.36 they got last week. And that brought it in at £1,277.64 gross. So not too shabby. And that worked out, the mileage was after that 300 odd miles dead, it, it was pants. It worked out at 63 pence, something like that. I can't remember, 62, 63 um it's pants but the gross was really good and it was not hard work really it was just driving sitting and driving there wasn't any aggro obviously couldn't get a job if i got the job from glasgow anything for the right money home i'd have been had a brilliant week but didn't happen but i wouldn't have got the gross if i hadn't got up to scotland so it's like that work out my fuel light was um £1.46 last week. So let's say one fifty. So 4.5 of that. Let's work out what is a gallon. So say one fifty. that's 3 quid, 6 quid and 75. £6.75. I'm going to round that up to 7 quid a gallon. Right, 7 quid. So I've rounded it up. So I'm, I'm looking on doing it on that sort of scale where it's, it's going to be no more. So 7 quid a gallon. My Doblo does 50 to the gallon. I've tried getting it over 50, but combined it's 50. I, no, the Blingo used to be 54, but this doesn't take Ad Blue, and it's a heavier motor and it can carry more weight. It's just a bigger motor all around. So if I get seven quid out of 50, out of 500, that's 70 quid. So I did 2000, so that's 280 pound in fuel last week. So that's a good guide for you guys who, you know, how much are you making? You take 280 quid fuel, that takes it down to a thousand. Still a good week. 
Then I've got to pay all my other exes and all the exes. It's still a really good week for me. You know, my wages come out of that. There's insurances, there's van depreciation, blah, 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 blah. But that's what it is. So good week. This week coming is a really good week, hopefully, because I'm doing four days, Monday to Thursday, because on Friday, me and my good lady are off on holiday. Much needed sun. We're going to the Gambia, West Africa, for a week. Friday, we come back following Saturday. So I am going to be not doing anything too adventurous, especially with the weather. Won't be going in Scotland because the weather's looking pants. I ain't getting stuck up there. Uh, I won't be going probably up the northeast. I'll probably be, hopefully, I've got a job Monday from Milton Keynes again. Different pickup, different company, really good company, going to Birmingham. And I'm going to be darting around and making sure I get home because they're just going to make it nice and easy and start winding down. Also, yesterday, Saturday, I took the van. The van finally, I took it to where I got it from because there was a clutch sensor that needed replacing. Although, to be honest, it hasn't played up all week and it was only the week before it played up, but they'd had this sensor in and they said, just pop it in any time. And I've done 10,000 miles in the van. So when it, uh, I phoned them up and I booked it in 10.30 Saturday. Me and my good lady went out and made a sort of day of it, really. We, uh, we went there. They said it'd take half an hour. But before I got there, I'd phoned them up and says, can you replace the oil? I says, because I like to replace my oil every 10,000 miles in the van, although the service is every 20,000. But I think that's too long to leave it for the oil. So I had the oil replaced and the oil filter and they did the clutch sensor and that was at the garage. The clutch sensor and all that was free. I got a discount on the oil, although the oil was expensive. I knew it would be, but all good. The van's back and for the first 10,000 miles, the van has been brilliant. Not going to lie, it's been brilliant. I just hope it long continues. And yeah, we had a good day yesterday. We ended up at Stratford, upon Avon on the way home. I had something to eat. So yesterday was a good day. Um, today we're just chilling, really. Uh, I think we're going to go out in a bit. That's all good. Hope you all had a good week. Please like and subscribe. Any questions, I am trying to answer them. People are asking me questions. You'll have to bear with me. It may take me a couple of days to get back to you because I don't tend to look back too much uh, or get time to. But I will answer them. And roll on next week, especially Friday when we're on our way to Gambia. So best wishes, guys. Have a good week.